Man, this is one of the greatest comeback stories in music history. This artist had six top 10 hits, including one of the biggest number ones of the time you know, when he first came onto the scene. And then literally overnight, he became a has-been. This huge band came out and wiped his style from the musical hemisphere. His label wouldn't even release his stuff after that. He even had to move to the other side of the world and play gigs at dives just to keep his dream alive. He was shut out of the charts for 13 long years. Now one day he ran into the biggest star in the world at a party and that star gave him a chance for the biggest comeback ever. He wrote a great song that he knew was a smash. It returned him to the top of the charts almost a decade and a half later. The Hall of Fame artist gives us the story directly, coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you've ever listened to an album from front to back, back to front, all the way through in one sitting, you're gonna dig this channel. That's what we used to do back in the day, right? This is the one-stop nostalgia shop. Make sure to subscribe below so you never miss an interview. We also have a Patreon with extra content for insiders. Your help there, it keeps it a daily channel, helps us get more interviews, all that good stuff. You can also become an honorary producer with even more content. So it's time for another edition of our series, The New Standards. This is a show that takes an in-depth look into songs that just transcend genre and decade and fads. They're songs that are monumental touchstones in our culture and society. We listen to them every day. Previous episodes, we've covered Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin, Dreams by uh, Fleetwood Mac, and also Hotel California by Eagles. That I don't know when we'll get together then, son. But today we're breaking down arguably the greatest comeback song of all time. A song that would return a legendary singer-songwriter to the top of the charts 13 years after his first number one hit. The greatest stories ever told in pop culture history, whether in sports or movies or tech or music, they always have that wonderful comeback tale. You know, in sports, no one will ever forget George Foreman's great rebound to become heavyweight champion at age 40. Or when Marlon Brando shook off some box office duds and hit back with his performance in The Godfather won an Oscar. I can't remember the last time that you invited me to your house for a cup of coffee. And no one can forget Steve Jobs after being fired from his own company and returning decades later, rising from the ashes to create the iPod and the iPhone and all that jazz. There it is, right there. In music, there have been three comeback stories that stand so much taller than the rest. Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, and Neil Sedaka. Neil may be the greatest story of them all for the sheer fact that he labored for over a decade moving past the musical changes that started with the Beatles coming to America and the psychedelia, folk rock, and beyond hard rock, heavy metal. Because of his remarkable perseverance, his absolute commitment, his undying passion, his unparalleled tenacity, and his immense faith he had in his own music, he outlived all those musical trends. When after 13 years of being shut out of the charts, he went to number one in 1975 with Laughter in the Rain. Hand in hand the Having written and performed some of the greatest pop songs of the late 50s and early 60s that defined the Brill Building, and the innocence of early rock and roll. You know, his first number one hit in the early 60s was another standard, Breaking Up is Hard to Do. It's hard to do, remember when. It was one of uh, six top 10 hits for the Sedaka in his first few years on the scene. And then the Beatles came to America and overnight, he was a musical pariah. Radio wouldn't play his music anymore and his label wouldn't even release it. The world had definitely changed and Sadaka feared his career might be over for good. For the next decade, he played in England, in Australia. Sometimes he played in dives. He basically played whenever and wherever he could just to have a chance to keep his dream of getting back to the top of his professional life. He first had a comeback in Britain with the release of his album Emergence with his breathtaking composition, Solitaire. 
It's playing solitaire. Of course, the Carpenters had a hit with that. It's the only game in town. But it failed to capture the American market. So he focused on the UK at the time. And then one day he ran into Elton John at a party. Sadaka found out that Elton was a huge fan. And Elton learned Sadaka had no American record label. So he suggested Sadaka sign with his label, Rocket Record Company, and Sadaka accepted the offer. When Elton John visited Sadaka at his London apartment, they discussed plans for relaunching his career in the US. The game plan was pretty simple. Sadaka would take all the best stuff he'd written on the albums that had been hits in, in the UK and put them together. Elton was ecstatic. He said, and I quote, it had been like Elvis coming up and giving us the chance to release his records. We couldn't believe our luck. One of these songs was Laughter in the Rain that Neil had written with his new co-writer, Phil Cody. The second it was finished though, Neil knew it was a number one hit. But a lot of things would happen that would try to stop his comeback. Coming up next, the legend himself, Neil Sedaka, tells us about his unbelievable comeback, all these stories about riding laughter in the rain and how Billy Joel told him that he accidentally ripped off this song for one of his great songs and how he had to kind of change it up. This is a phenomenal story. Now, as we get into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. To me, the tried and true test for any kind of product is time. I've been wearing Zenny's for over two years now, and I'm one of the biggest supporters and evangelists of this brand. They are quality frames for a price point that is pretty unbelievable. And the extra features I've added to all mine, like blue blocks, it made my constant headaches go away uh, from staring at screens. So many things. Go design your own pair at zenny.com or download the Zenny app or check below at our, our link. Here's Neil with the story. Sadak is back, Rocket Records, Laughter in the Rain. One of my favorite songs of all time. That's a song that when it comes on the radio, it's illegal to turn the station. It has to be. It has <laughs> to be you. a law because Thank it's you. just such a feel-good song. Now when I'll you tell feel you this, it. Yeah. I appreciate that. Here's the story. I was driving the car in New York and on the radio, this is two weeks before my laughter came out. I was flipping the channel, flipping the stations, and on the radio came... Laughter in the Rain by Leah Roberts. Oh, yeah. A great f***ing record. <laughs> I said, oh, my God, uh, I'm, I'm ruined. My, my comeback song, she's going to have a smash. Because you're still a few weeks away from releasing it. I stopped the car, ran, called Elton. I said, call MCA. I want the record out in five days because Leah Roberts is going to be all over the radio. Yeah. And he did it. He put it out in a few days, rushed it before it was supposed to really be released. And no one ever heard of Leah Roberts. And I, I felt bad because she, she had a great record. R&B. It was an R, kind of an R&B twist to it. I think but she yeah. was on the chart with it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it went to the top 100, the upper reaches of the top 100. But, but story uh, about how you wrote that, though, because okay. Phil Cody... He wasn't feeling it, is what I read. He had to go and take a walk and... I started about it. in the middle. Ooh, da, 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 da. That was how I started writing the tune. Why? Because there was an Elton John uh, record that went... Um, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, you're in the key of F, and I wanted to go to a B-flat minor 7 chord to A, to a flat. Mm -hmm. And I'll think of the song of Elton John, Yellow Brick Road, and uh, there was one chord that he went to a ooh. I said, I'm taking that chord, <laughs> that one chord. I mean, it's a drop dead chord. Yeah. And that's how I started writing it from there. Da, 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 da. I said, I'll get myself back to the first key. And it was like um, Aaron Copeland, uh, American Indian. Open canyons, uh, da, 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 all black notes, uh, pentatonic scale. Da, 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 da,
very pentatonic, all black notes. And um, Phil uh, wrote it. He went home. We wrote two songs that day. I said, you know Laughter in the Rain? He said, yeah. I said, that's number one. If that record comes out the way it should, it's number one. He said, how could you tell? I said, I've been writing songs for 30, 40 years. <laughs> I could tell. And a funny story, Billy Joel came to me one yeah. day in a restaurant. He said, I have to tell you the funniest story. I got up in the middle of the night. I wrote this great tune and I called my musicians to come to my apartment at 3 a.m. They said, Billy Joel is calling us at 3 a.m. He's crazy. And he said, I want you to hear this tune. Da, 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 da. They said, it's good, but it's Neil Sedaka's Laughter in the Rain. <laughs> yeah. He said, oh, unconsciously, I, I copied it. And uh, it was a great form of flattery. And then he had Mrs. O'Leary's Grocery Store, da na 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 for a penny. And then he had to change it to Mrs. O'Leary's Grocery yeah. Store. Moving out. Na, 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 moving out. Wow, it's a I love that of flattery. Story. Billy Joel is one of my favorite of all time. That's, oh my that's, God. that's incredible. What's cool about it is, though, Phil Cody, I read kind of his version of the story. You were starting out and you kind of started out in the middle and he just was kind of, it was a hot day. He had to drive. He wasn't feeling it. So he went and took a walk on like this old golf course and mm -hmm. smoked a little bit and mm -hmm. just was, saw deer on the fairway. And then he came back and wrote the lyrics in like five minutes. And it wasn't even raining. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't even raining. <laughs> we lived upstate New York, and it was a beautiful area, a private area. Uh, Mary Rogers Gettle lived there, and Helen Hayes, and... Uh, wow. But anyway, yeah, he came back with that lyric, and... Uh, He's kind of thinking of his girlfriend, the girlfriend that he had at the time. And it is, it's just this, the chorus, when you get to the chorus, I Ooh. mean, it just, yeah, Goosebumps oh song, right? The painted picture of being soaked with I've, no umbrella and they were holding each other and under they had to run under a tree. Under a tree I turned to her and, she, and your vocal is so amazing. I love it. It's and just I remember one of the fifth dimension said, I heard it on the radio that the girl who sings Laughter in the Rain is fabulous. <laughs> I said, that's not a girl, that's me. <laughs> that's my success. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, also, he said that you had doubled the line on, I think. I feel the warmth of a hand in mine. Da 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 da, so fine. Yeah. Ooh. He said, no, just, I feel the warmth of a hand in mine, then go to that drop dead. He took me out of it, yeah. And he said that that meant so much to him that he had suggested something and, and you took it and then that you said, yeah, that made the song better. There was a tribute to me a few years ago and he got up and said, I had the greatest teacher in the world. I sat next to Neil Sedaka's right hand what? as we were writing. I was on a chair and I watched how he wrote. He said it was the greatest education he ever had. Wow which was beautiful. Yeah. And I have to thank him for some gorgeous lyrics. Yeah. Well, on the arrangement, Artie Butler. Oh my God. I mean, this is a man who arranged What a Wonderful World, Louis Armstrong, and so many other great songs. What a wonderful world. He said that the secret was don't get in the way of the vocalist. Yep. And he wrote another melody with the violins. That was the melody line yeah. of Who I Hail After in the Rain. He's a genius, Artie Butler. No vocal overdubs, too. You just did it straight up. There was no vocal overdubs. I read that. Uh, I had those great singers. Uh, mm, yeah, I did one vocal underneath. Ooh, ooh, I Hail After in the Rain. Just in that spot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you told the story about Leah Roberts and how you heard it on there, it was interesting about that is when I was talking to Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde, it happened to Barry Mann. He had, we got to get out of this place, and that was going to be his first hit, and the animals beat him to the punch. We got to get out of this place. We got to get out of this place. Girl, a better... 
And I read that you had read that story, and that's one of the, th the thoughts that you had when you heard it. You're like, oh, man, this I can't lost, happen. I lost my combat record, yeah. The other thing that was amazing is that Leva and the kids, they made a sign when it went into the top 100, number 95. I read that they made a little sign for you, and that's so special. My wife put a sign on the door after being off the charts for 11, 12 years. Uh, congratulations, laughter hit number 96 on yeah. Billboard. Gosh. I'm a crier. Yeah, no, no, that's a, an I'm emotional a, moment. That's I'm, so, a wee, I'm a weeper. Your wife has always been such a support to you. I've read when she moved with you and always believed in you in all those years. She gets the, the she gets the, uh, the award. Yeah. She gets the award for staying with me all these years. Yeah. Because I'm kids, a crazy artist. Your kids have always supported you. And it, it's, what was so great about that is when you heard Casey Kasem say it went to number one, that was another, just took 16, 16 weeks. weeks in 12 years. He hasn't been on the Hot 100 now for nine years. We were at the Beverly Hills Hotel and we heard Casey Kasem, the new number one, by Neil Sedaka. So it's no small thing when his comeback record hits number one. And we danced to it and cried. Written and recorded by Neil Sedaka. <laughs> and then uh, I sang at the Troubadour. I sang Which at the Troubadour. Which was a huge deal in that year. Three nights at the Troubadour. And there are a lot of people there, too. James Taylor. James and Taylor, a Andy Williams, uh, Johnny Matthews. Oh, my God. Yeah. How am I going to perform in front of all these people? I know. Wow. David Foster played the piano. Yeah, yeah, David mm -hmm. Foster. And he was so influenced by that, too. That's one of his favorite songs is what I've read. But also covers. The covers, Donny Osmond, of course, covered. The Weather Girls. And they use that on that 70s show quite a bit because mm. that was such a massive song. I mean, 1975, you were on top of the world. Happy Isn't Neil great? He's just such a great, just a class guy. Leave us a comment about this incredible story, this comeback story. Do you think this is one of the best comeback stories ever? What about this song? It's, it's just so likable, so much joy. What are your memories of the song? What are your thoughts? Let's have a good discussion below. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe to be a full-time part of this channel. We'd love to have you. Until next time, three chords. Down the truth, my friends. Mm -hmm.